Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are back at Swan Island Dahlias. So this is episode two of our Meet the Gardeners, Meet the Farmer series. The first video we did, we visited a beautiful garden and today I thought what better place or what better farm to visit than Swan Island Dahlias. So for those of you who don't know, Swan Island Dahlias is located right here in my backyard in Canby, Oregon. Last year we did a video where we showed you guys the farm, the layout of the farm, their display garden, and we're going to be doing that again this year. But before we do, we're going to meet with a very special team member of the farm. So we are here with one of the team members at Swan Island Dahlias, and I'm going to let her introduce herself. Good morning, I'm Heather Schlow, part of the team here at Swan Island Dahlias. So Heather, we were here last year, and that video was massively loved by so many people. And last year I took people around and showed them the farm, but this year I really wanted to kind of give them a background on the farm. So can you tell us a little bit about the farm, the history of it, how you guys came um, to have this place uh, and where it kind of all started? So it started in 1927 in Portland and moved out to the Canby area, a little bit south of where we are right now in the 40s. And this land that we are currently on was purchased in the 50s my family purchased the business business in 1963 um, my dad was 12 years old he is the owner um, and so they were dairy farmers in northern washington and when the family that had the business the mccarter family decided to retire they visited local farms and two weeks later came a letter in the mail with the chance to purchase the farm and my grandpa was so excited that he didn't have to uh, milk cows every day so um, they packed up and came down, and so they've been down here since 1963, and I would be third generation here at the farm. Wow. Did you guys ever think that the farm would be what it is today? Like, did you think it would get this massively big? You know, it started out mainly a wholesale business, and then retail slowly grew, and then things transitioned to now be more retail than wholesale, mm -hmm. um, just because we want to have direct connection with our um, consumers that are growing so we can give the best advice we can help everybody have amazing gorgeous dahlias which is what my passion is if we can grow them here we want you to have them at home gorgeous so mm -hmm. um, for us it, it's grown drastically um, and I couldn't be happier that it's grown drastically yeah. but um, it's definitely made changes mm -hmm. to who and what we do and how we function here at the farm but mm -hmm. it couldn't be better Mm -hmm. Now as far you guys do have such a big fan base and you guys reach so many people throughout the country. Do you guys ship your dahlias internationally? We do. Okay. Um, we, before COVID we were much more international. Okay. We are now because of COVID we had trouble with shipping issues okay. with shipments getting to the country mm -hmm. where they need to go mm -hmm. to the consumer. Um, so we have stopped temporarily okay. last year and this year we're kind of on a pause so we're just Canada and US we're mm -hmm. hoping to reevaluate in January and make a decision on whether okay. we can add back all the other countries that we like to ship to so we okay. have a lot of people that are waiting and we are waiting too but we yeah. just don't want their shipments sitting in pending and sure. not being able to get to them so. sure and speaking of tuber sales I know you guys have just started yeah. um, their tuber sales so we're allowed to order now yeah, it's the best them. way. I think it's okay. the best way to come out, view them, mm -hmm. see them, see them growing, yeah. pick out your favorites, and then plan for what you're going to have in your yard next yeah. year. Paper catalogs are wonderful, and the website's wonderful, yeah. but it's not real life, so right. out here is best. Yeah, it really is. It's, it's completely different being here than just, you know, seeing things mm -hmm. in a piece of paper. Um, now, you guys, when does the tuber sale open and close? Because I know a lot of people had issues last year with such a high demand for flowers, especially dahlias. Um, do you recommend like people ordering now? I spring? recommend ordering early because okay. very few items are sold out at this point. We did sell out of a couple already. Wow. We open August 1st for tuber sales and that's on the website or by phone or by walk-in. Mm -hmm. um, but we are offering 10% off for oh. doing an early order through okay. uh, August 1st through September 30th. Okay. So it's really best to order <laughs> now and get right. the discount. Right. It's automatic, but it's online only. Okay. Um, and so you can order now through next spring. We actually mm -hmm. take orders through the end of May next year. Okay. But it's really best to order early, especially if you have something you have your heart set on that you sure. want because it might sell out. Yeah, I know I'm always out to get cafe au lait, you guys. So 
<laughs> Don't it's be like gorgeous. me, but yeah, it's just <laughs> such a favorite. Um, now I know, you know, when we go out to your fields, a lot of people always ask about the staking of the dahlias. Mm -hmm. We notice that you guys don't have to stake your dahlias. Can you explain why? So we don't stake um, mm -hmm. in our fields. We right. do do staking once in a while here if you walk through our show garden, but mm -hmm. we also top our varieties at three, uh, when they're about three sets of leaves or about 18 to 20 inches tall, mm -hmm. you're gonna go down a leaf set and pinch out the top, which actually creates a much rounder, more robust plant that's not so top heavy. Okay. Um, but also you might notice in our fields, it mm -hmm. seems like we're almost hilled or that we've got raised beds. We don't, we plant flat, mm -hmm. but we slowly bring up dirt to support the stock. Okay. So we're planting about three to four inches deep and slowly bringing dirt up mm -hmm. um, on the stock, never covering the plant completely. Okay. And what that does is give that stock extra support. The okay. one thing to remember is if we lose a plant in our field, it's really not mm -hmm. a crisis. The stock will grow again because the tuber's not damaged. But that can be heartbreaking if you've been growing four months in your yard and bam, wind or rain hits it and breaks it off, then you've sure. lost it. So we recommend anything that's over three feet that you go ahead and stake it just to be safe. So. Okay, that's that's really good to know because I think a lot of people think, and I like that you mentioned the pinching because some people don't believe in it, but I it's know. so, it's, it's crazy. so good, <laughs> you have to pinch your dahlias. It is, I mean, some are so good about branching on their own yeah. and others are just like a tree trunk with little tiny stems off. And mm -hmm. if you stop that growth early, it really creates the laterals, the stems down low to produce. Okay. And so you end up with a rounder, more stable plant. Sure. Um, and we really feel like it's beneficial. Okay. Now, as far as, I know you guys grow on nearly 40 acres here of just dahlias. Approximately how many tubers did you guys plant this year? Just this year, we planted about half a million. Wow. So that's yearly. That's crazy. Um, everything is dug. It mm -hmm. almost seems impossible. Yeah. We plant three rows at a time, but we dig one row at a time. Okay. Um, so it's a long process. It's sure. a lot of man, hand, labor. Yeah. It's not something just machines can do. All the dividing has to be done. Mm -hmm. by a person because every yeah. clump is different so it takes a lot of time that's insane that's it's such a <laughs> i i follow you guys religiously on instagram and i know you guys always share so much of what you're doing depending if it's planting season or digging season and it's just so crazy to see how much effort and work goes into taking yeah. those tubers out and most people that visit just believe these fields are the same every year but if yeah. you were to come visit this different varieties are planted every year yeah. in different locations so we truly yeah. do dig it i show videos yeah. but yeah. some people are like that's not possible yeah no it's i have a hard totally enough time is. with my 10 plants yeah. how could you even <laughs> think of doing this yeah but. and i noticed that um this year some of the f do you guys rotate the crops or is there a way that you guys plant them we don't they okay. have been planted here since the 1950s and we have okay. never rotated crops. So okay. um, we never have a cover crop. We never have a field that's sitting. Mm -hmm. We're always planting. We're always looking for more land. We're on a really special soil, wow, a yeah. very small area here in Canby that allows mm -hmm. us to dig and harvest all winter long, even after rain. So um, mm -hmm. we're on a very sandy soil, but a sand that holds enough nutrients. So it's a little tricky, mm -hmm. um, but it's really important to be where we are, so. Sure, and I noticed last year you guys had your, um, you had a little patch in the back of new varieties. Now, are those ones that you guys are breeding or are those ones that you guys are testing to see if you're gonna put them into production? Is that the trial garden you're referring yes. to? Yes. Mm -hmm. So the trial garden, there are nine across the U.S. and um, across the U.S. and Canada. So one in Canada, eight in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And they are hobbyists or commercial growers that plan to introduce the varieties most likely this this year mm -hmm. um but they are being scored by dahlia society judges and they're oh, judging okay. for bloom quality not for cut flower quality not for plant quality mm -hmm. just for the characteristic of a perfect bloom okay. the way it angles on the stem how full it is for its classification mm -hmm. and those scores are then all sent to the american dahlia society and then awards are given for each bloom classification every year so okay we're always trying to get an award we have mm -hmm. three varieties in there that's the max you can have in each trial garden is three so most growers send one or two or three varieties to sure. each trial garden mm -hmm. and then the scores are taken and um, accumulated and then Okay. awards are given so okay. we have three varieties in there but the rest are not ours okay we um lend and a loan i guess the property for the portland dye society to run okay. this trial garden 
Um, we give them the space for free just to use, just mm -hmm. for our visitors to have. But mm -hmm. sometimes it's really hard for visitors because they're like, I want TG5. Yeah. We have no information <laughs> about whose is whose. We know right. who our three are, but right. beyond that, we don't have any information. Okay. And it's not released until October. So if you're here visiting okay. and want to know a variety, you can reach out to the Portland Dye Society after October okay. once judging is done mm -hmm. and they can provide you. But it might be a hobbyist that only has 10, 10 plants to sell. So wow. not always okay. is it a commercial grower that's going to have hundreds to sell. So things sure. sometimes are sold out before the trial garden judging is even wow. done. So that's so fascinating. It, it's really a, a an interesting and fascinating thing to watch. Yeah. Sometimes you'll walk in there like, I don't like the color, but yeah. the bloom is amazing. Sure. So we find varieties in there and do purchase from other growers once mm -hmm. in a while if we find something outstanding mm -hmm. to bring into our own stock. So. Okay. That is so cool. I know I saw cool. some varieties and I was like, I need my hands on these. <laughs> yeah. But what are they? <laughs> Gorgeous. Uh, yeah, they are. Now, um, is there anything special that you want to mention about the farm? Anything coming up? Any events that you want to call out? You know, this year has been so different with COVID um, mm -hmm. and having to be safe and healthy mm -hmm. and keep our staff and our visitors um, and our gardeners safe and healthy sure. so we have had to adapt and change and think outside the box so mm -hmm. normally we have an indoor festival for six days okay we were unable we had to make the decision back in april if we mm -hmm. were hiring all of the florists and vendors and buying all the product that goes into that and we opted that it was not looking like we were going to be okay uh, have mandates lifted so we opted to go outdoors only this year okay but what we did is take and extend the festival. Instead of six days, we extended it 60 days, which wow. means a lot more work for our staff. Sure. But it also meant more time for people to visit, more events spread out. Not okay. everybody needed to be here in a short period of time okay. to allow everybody to social distance. So we've got concerts, we've got rotating food carts, we've got a farmer's market every Friday. Okay. We've got classes going on. There's yeah. so much, and I think it kind of hits everybody's interest. Sure. So it's, it just gives it a whole different taste this year. Yeah, I, I think I got a glimpse of the class that you held and I was like, well, I have to come to one of those yes. to learn more about how to style the dahlias. <laughs> now, I know you have a crazy day ahead of you, um, but before you leave, can you tell us what your favorite variety is? So, you know, I have so many favorites, mm -hmm. but probably my number one favorite that I always refer to and tell people you've got to have it is Michaela Miranda. Okay. It's white and lavender. It's short. It's stocky plant. Mm -hmm. It's about a seven to eight inch bloom mm -hmm. and it's an early bloomer, which is okay. very unusual because anything usually in the seven, eight getting in that range starts to be a little later. Mm -hmm. And instead it's one of the first to bloom. Okay. So you can't, can't skip it. If you want just one dahlia in your, in your yard, make sure you get it. It's outstanding. Okay. We'll make sure to show you guys which one that is. Well, Heather, thank you so much for taking the time to answer some questions for us. And you guys, we will list uh, the resources. They have a great website, their Instagram account, their YouTube account, all of the information you need to start growing dahlias, you can find on there. So thank you again, Heather. Oh, thank you so much for taking the yeah. time to come visit us. Yeah. Thank you guys. Take care. This is going to be magical.
Trigga, can you put your hand next to that? Or this one maybe right here? Wow. Oh my God, that's so big. Pretty. Here's Diva. This is a really beautiful, just like deep burgundy. Look at that. Really beautiful bloom. I think if I were to harvest it, I'd harvest it at this stage right here. I don't want it to get too much more open than that. And you know, I'm not a big yellow <laughs> fan, but every time I see this AC Jerry, I just like, it's so bright and in your face. Again, not, not my cup of tea, but if you're looking for something like <laughs> super bright, like a highlighter yellow, then this dolly is really spectacular. Here's another really beautiful one, La Luna. And I think if I were to have yellow, this is the yellow I would have. It's a lot lighter and you can see there's just streaks of yellow running through. That is a really pretty one. It reminds me of popcorn. <laughs> so I am betting this is probably one of the ones that is sold out. If not yet, it will be soon. This one is always hard for me to get my hands on, Honeydew. But if you guys notice, look at all of the different varieties that it's blooming. I love it for this peachy color, but it also pulls a lot of yellow. And look at that plant over there. That one is nearly all red. And right here to your right, look at this one. How cool is that? Look at it. It's like totally mutating into like these odd colors. But this is a really special one. I'm definitely going to check with Heather to see if they still have these because they are super, super popular. And... They're beautiful, beautiful in arrangements. Here's another really beautiful peachy one, Andy's Legacy. That one is really precious. I like that a lot. Here's Mary Jo, and she is so cute. I love her. And, Sergey, can we just get like a shot of the mounds so I can show them? So this is what Heather was talking about, you guys, how, why they don't have to stake. It's because they mound up the, the dahlias so they won't topple over. And again, by pinching them, they're creating a rounder plant so they're a lot sturdier than just having that one single stalk to start with. Oh, look at this cute one. This one's called Smooches. Such a sweet color. And fun little fact, you guys, Sergey and I have this thing where no matter how mad we are at each other or for arguing or anything, uh, if one of us says smooch, then all bets are off. You have to give each other a kiss no matter what. <laughs> We're usually arguing about no more dahlias. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Look at this one. This is beautiful. I didn't I didn't order this one, but I will definitely add this one to the list. Number 528 Beyond. Look at that. I love when they open up like that and the petals just kind of reflect. So pretty. Look at this little cutie called Irish Glow. Look at how tiny she is. Look at that and it's such a beautiful little form I love that this would be so good in a container and actually you guys if you notice a lot of them are uh, taking their time to bloom last year when we were here the fields were a lot further than they are now but because we've had those heat waves it's kind of slowed everything down a bit but um, it looks like things are picking back up look at this one cupcake that's a cutie. Very cute. You can see the three stages of it. So this looks like it's starting or it's already bloomed. This one's aged and this
this one really aged. So I'm not too familiar with this variety, but just by looking at the whole entire row, I wonder if these stay pretty small around like this because this would be a really great dahlia as like a nice little hedge. Really bright yellow, but if you're looking for something bright and colorful, then this would be really cool. Hugs and kisses, look at how cool this one is. You have the lighter petals on the top and then underneath, you can see they get darker, or they are darker. That's really cool. Here's Michaela Miranda. This is Heather's favorite and for a good reason. Look at how stunning this one is. It's so girly. I love it so much. Look at the variations in bloom. This one is more white with just a little bit of purple, like that purple uh, lavender on the outside. Where this one, where this bee is just hanging out, has a lot more purple in it. But Again, with this one being the early, uh, or blooming earlier, this is the perfect dahlia for everybody to have in their garden. Such a stunner. Here's apple blossom, which is such a cult favorite, this one. Look at how pretty she is. Love that one. Mm-hmm.
para mí? Gracias. Hi. Oh, that's amazing. So you can see they're setting up for all of their events and there is an event calendar that I will show you guys in a little bit but we are going to hop into the display garden and there's a lot of people in there but it's such a beautiful space we showed it to you guys last year um, and I can see some changes already with some of the dahlia planting so let's go inside and take a look So we actually have a couple of the judges here um, at the trial garden. So we are going to just quickly walk through, but you can see, you can read this over um, and that kind of explains to you guys how it works. Um, but there are two lovely ladies here judging some of these flowers today. So I'm gonna take you guys around so you can see uh, the flowers. And again, these don't have names. We don't know who's growing them. We do know that Swan Island has a few varieties in here, but we don't know which ones and uh, they're being judged right now as part of the process. And again, um, like Heather said, they will be announced uh, in October who the winners are, but you can see that some of these blooms are just so incredible.
So when you're done touring the fields and the display garden, you can come out here, you can pick up fresh dahlias, which I just got like six bundles I'm so excited about. And make sure you guys go to their gift shop. They have a lot of really cool local things. Look at these cool bird houses. And here's the September uh, event calendar. You guys can take a look and take a quick screenshot of this if you're in the area. So you can see they have everything labeled out. They also, again, they post constantly on their Instagram page, on their website. So that's a really great um, resource for you guys. But it's definitely worth checking out this area. Um, it looks like they have the food trucks coming. Again, every day it's something different. So again, if you guys are here, make sure you come out. Thank you so much to Heather and the entire team here at Swan Island Dollies. You guys always make everybody feel like family here. And um, it's just, it's always so fun to be out here in your guys' farm. All right, guys, well, that wraps up today's tour. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. If you're ever in town, you have to come out here. You have to see this place for yourself in real life. There's nothing like it. Like Heather said, there's a big difference between seeing something in a catalog or online um, versus seeing it in real life and seeing these flowers just, they move you in such a way that you probably haven't been moved before by a flower. So make sure you come out. I will link down all of the resources you guys need to find out more information on their website. Follow them on Instagram. They provide so many good videos, so many great information about dividing tubers, about planting tubers, fertilizing, like everything. They're such an amazing, um, they just share amazing content. So make sure you guys are following them. Check out their YouTube channel as well. They do have some videos of uh, propagating dahlias, uh, planting, digging, all of that as well. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video and we will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.